Hey there everyone, it's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com and finally we are going to be breaking in to a really cool project, the Sea View from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. We've got a ton of amazing things planned for this build. This is the first chapter in the build-up. Thanks for joining us. So what you see behind me is uh, a Seaview model uh, rendered in fiberglass by a company called DeBoer Models. Now, uh, Dennis DeBoer is not really manufacturing these anymore. He's moving into sort of a semi-retirement phase of life. So before you get too excited, these are no longer available to purchase. It's 80 inches long. This is the large version. He did a smaller version, a 58 inch version as well, but this is the big guy. As a little bit of background, as you can see, it's, uh, you know, kind of uh, started. It's put together and it was, as far as I know, operational at one point in its career. Now, the previous owner was a gentleman by the name of Kerry Addington, and he did, uh, this was an obsession with his, and he did a really, really good job. The interior control works have seen multiple uh, iterations over the course of the years, but basically it's empty right now. Now, I've not looked at this thing, gosh, in probably over a year. <laughs> so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you uh, first impressions. We're going to make a list of to-dos, come up with some strategies about what we're going to do. But before we do, let's, uh, let's take a look at things front to back. So as you can see, this is the four window version. So this is the series version. Uh, and uh, underneath, as part of that, is a big flying sub bay and uh, part of what we got here was a scale flying sub that is going to go with the build. Um, now I've managed to talk the new owner into allowing me to uh, take a shot at making this remote control. The idea being this little sucker is going to be able to come out of the bay and uh, and tool around. Now, I don't know, you know, depending on how skillful he is, uh, maneuvering it back into place, maybe that's feasible, but certainly launching it is gonna be very, very doable. Um, I think we can make that happen. Um, you know, are we gonna be able to make these doors open and close? I don't know. You know, maybe we'll just make them uh, with like a removable panel, we'll get to that. But uh, that's the plan, a functional flying sub to go with the functional sea view. Now, uh, I, I do want to point out here as well, Kerry let me know, he reworked this entire bow uh, as a result of some conversations that he had with a hydrodynamicist, I think I said that correctly, to uh, improve the hydrodynamic efficiency and performance characteristics of this boat. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what that entails. I mean, obviously he's the one that went into it, um, but it did involve reworking, you know, this, uh, this dome shape all through here. Upper hull, the, the deck here is really thin fiberglass. Uh, you can see in places it's actually cracked. So this is gonna require some rework, some uh, filling, sanding, reinforcing, but uh, very, very light, which is good. The sail um, bolts on and off, and these planes, as they stand right now, are, are static. They're non-functional, but I believe we're going to make these functional. We'll put a waterproof servo up there, just like I did in my recent Nacken build, and that will make the, uh, the sail planes functional for depth keeping. That's the idea. So these are not going to affect the pitch of the boat because they're almost in the middle. Um, they will affect the depth keeping abilities of the boat. Um, we got baggies full of detail parts in here. Um, these look like parts of the flying sub kit. Yep, flying sub by monogram in 1/160th scale. We've got some broken resin parts. These are the intake scoops for this area here. I believe what I'm going to do is is come up with new files. But we'll see if these are. You know what, if these are workable, maybe we'll, we'll keep them. They're actually not bad. 
They're pretty good. Um, but we'll we'll take a look at that. We've got a spare sail and uh, a spare dive plane. And then we've got a bunch of detail parts in here as well. It looks like some sail details, some hatch details, control horn, a ladder, some little hatches. So uh, all of these will uh, you know, be put into their proper places. We've got a little radar mast in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, looks like some blueprints. We'll have to tear into this in a moment. We'll take a look and see what that is all about. And uh, some really, really cool helical impellers. Um, there's a bunch of different versions in here. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. I don't know if we'll use them for sure because, uh, you know, the thickness of the blades, um, these are not going to be as efficient as something like a, like a three-prop, or sorry, a three-blade um, brass propeller. But um, we'll see. They, uh, if we can make them fit, I think we'll use them because those look super cool really cool let me grab one out i don't know if you can see through the there we go so yeah i mean that looks mean that looks like that'll move some water for sure there's a bunch of different sizes and configurations and all sorts of stuff in here so we'll see which ones we end up uh, using um but moving to the back so let's take a look underneath here we've got you got interesting stuff going on. So if you take a look there, there was like this rework. I believe this was like an intake that he had. We'll take a look inside and see what this is all about. And then moving to the back, we've got this big monstrous hole in the lower hull, which is surrounded by silicone, which is super cool. Uh, but we'll get that looked at too have to take a look and see where the the diving bell comes out of maybe i don't know maybe that was supposed to be the where the flying or the diving bell came out and he made it functional for the ballast system i don't know um and then we got intakes for the water pumps now this is not sufficient for operation of this boat um it needs way more intake especially once we put the uh the covers on here um, Dave Merriman recently did a, a beautiful presentation on his builds, uh, various iterations of the Sea View, and one of the most important things is water flow to those impellers or, or, or pump jets or, or props, um, and that involves. We'll keep this like this for cosmetic purposes, but underneath, it's removing the entire forward part of this nacelle which will allow maximum water flow in and functional reverse of the boat. So that water will blow in a reverse direction. You'll be able to stop if you're about to crash into something. Uh, looking on the back here, we've got some dive planes. Now, just my thought looking at this right now, if you look at it from the back, when these are in full tilted position, look at that. They are completely blocking the entire output of that uh, prop. Just a little tiny bit of room here. So the, the only thing that's doing work is what is protruding from the back. So all of that area on the inside is not doing anything but making itself a plug. That's it. Oh look, there's props in there. Big beautiful brass props. Nice. This is going to need to get reworked. Um, unfortunately, we're going to need to pull these out and at the very least cut them back so that when they're fully tilted, they are not impeding water flow from the uh, nacelles there. And then we got uh, rudders all linked together, which is uh, as they should be. And then uh, right here, oh, look, I can get into it. I'm assuming this is how we, uh -oh, uh oh, there we go, get to the linkages. Yep, there's our rudder linkages and our dive plane linkages. Nice, does that work? Derp, 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 derp. Yep, does. Does that work? Yes, it does. Bonus, less work for me to do. Um, we got some, these look like little incandescent bulbs in here. 
Um, this could be a bear to replace. So hopefully these are functional. If not, there's going to be major surgery involved, which I am not excited about. Uh, let's take a look inside here. We got some super heavy duty cables running to what I assume are the LED lights in the sail. So that's good. We may replace those with something a little bit more, um, you know, suitable for the application. We don't need 12 gauge wire to run like 30 milliamps of current through it. But let's take a look inside here. Oh, look at me. I already put a waterproof box in here thinking that this is what I was going to do. So removable bridge, I do remember that. So this, the idea behind this is you unscrew this. And then the whole bridge pops out like that. So that's cool. Um, fits up on a little ledge. And then this goes up like that. But the question is, is that going to allow our flying sub? I don't know. I don't know. I think it will. I think it will. Yeah, making those doors retractable, I'm not thinking that's going to work very good. If we can do it, we can do it, but if not, just a removable panel. There we go. Now, I've got 3D files to replicate this bridge, so we could make this a really cool-looking area up there. Um, now, oh, here's that intake thing. It's just a tube. Hmm. Just a tube that runs in like a little scoop. Got a hunch we're going to be reworking all of that. This is a two-part epoxy. And this is the ballast tank that he had envisioned. You can see it's massive and it is below the water line, which is good. But it goes all the way down to the bottom of the keel. This could be really interesting. I don't know. I think this might be keel weight for ballast and then this is like where it floods from we're going to rework all of this those are the intakes in there so right now it's kind of sucking water from the inside of the hull and i'm not sure what this was right here i don't remember i'm sure he told me but uh, here's our flex shafts for the rudders works really good actually this this is actually I don't think this is going to be bad at all. Those props are installed on uh, adjustable brackets, and they've got dog bones in there. So we just need to run dog bone shafts to some brushless motors, and then maybe seal off these intakes so that it draws from the outside and not the inside of the hull. Yeah, I think we can make this. I think we can make this work. So. Well, you know, all in all, I don't think this is going to be a bad project. You know, the, the work done to date is, has been pretty good. It's got some things that need to get addressed, like the dive planes. And this is all cracked uh, and broken here because this shaft extends all the way to the outside. Um, we're going to need to rethink this again. And then, uh, if we can, withdraw those dive planes from the inside there. Oh, I see a set screw, so we may be able to extract all this stuff. All right, guys, let's take a look at some of the extra goodies that uh, we ended up getting with this thing. Um, sea View Soundings, issues 1, 2, and 3 from autumn of 1989. That's pretty cool. Lots of information in here on like the series and special effects and episodes and all that stuff. First one had the blueprints which um, we already got from that book that you saw me get uh, earlier on from Mike Wood. Um, but these will be helpful. Uh, lots of good information in there. There's an episode guide, which is sort of pretty interesting. And um, an old edition of the spring 1994 subcommittee report. Um, if you guys 
uh, are not familiar with the subcommittee. It's a, an international organization all focused on submarines, all aspects of submarines, remote control, static display, history, collectibles, video games, anything you can think of. If you're not already a member, it's 10 bucks a year. You get access to all that information and a world-class publication in the subcommittee report. I really, really, really recommend it. So little spiel um, out of the way. Other things we got, we got uh, some DVDs. Or, or DVRs or CD-ROMs or whatever. A um, little bit of an issue in that uh, the computers are no longer made with CD-ROM drives. Um, if that doesn't make you feel old. Um, blueprints of the bridge area uh, are in here as well as uh, a bunch of photocopies and cutaways and little stuff like that. Um, like I mentioned, I do have 3D files. Uh, for these so that these will be maybe a little bit redundant, but uh, still super cool Some plastic things. I think these were some first attempts at you know, like the floor up uh, in the bow there Found the bay doors. Hopefully these fit That would be super cool um, And then we got these which Look like they fit right in here so these would be uh, presumably like the rear launch bay, which I think is slightly in the wrong spot. It's supposed to be back here. I don't know, but these might work, you know, make them do something or just glue them in place. I don't know, one or the other. Um, but yeah, extra stuff that'll make uh, just a, a cooler model. Um, I was looking, so uh, you guys can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, which I know you guys are going to do anyway, whether or not I ask for it. Um, this, uh, according to the book that I got, is 406 feet long? Yes, 406 feet long in real life, quote unquote. Um, which means at 80.5 inches, this is almost exactly 1 60th scale. And that jives with these little dudes that came in. I measured them, the little, these little sailor guys, uh, and they work out to, at this 160th scale, about five foot 10, which is about right. Or maybe five, four foot, five foot nine. They're short sailors, they always are on submarines, right? Um, so I am going to be proceeding on the basis of a 160th scale model um, for the purposes of creating interior and all of that stuff. Um, also discovered, and I've not really seen this on a lot of other models, but the sea view is supposed to have two aft torpedo tubes um, that come out right about here. So in 60th scale, I don't know, actually, I don't know if you saw that or not, right, right here. Um, in 60th scale, that works out to uh, 1130 seconds of an inch. So I'm going to, I'm going to model those in. I really want to kind of super detail this a little bit. Uh, it's pretty basic right now. These, you know, are, uh, they look proper, you know, according to the uh, uh, series and stuff like that. They're just, it's so, I don't know. It's kind of plain looking. I, I wish I could, maybe we'll add some railings. I don't know, some cleats, something. We ought to make this thing look like a submarine and not a movie prop. But uh, we'll get there. I forgot to point out earlier too, these are super high output uh, LED lights that have already been installed both here and um, underneath. So we'll, maybe we'll hook up some power to those in a little bit and see what they do. But this is what we are starting out with. Um, 80 inch DeBoer Sea View, full RC with operational flying sub, at least that's the plan. So this is an overview of um, what we've got to work with. I'm gonna call this chapter one, chapter two, Gonna be sinking our teeth into this bad boy and uh, getting it all working. So thanks for joining me on this journey, uh, both myself and uh, Logan there <laughs> are gonna be making this work uh, as well as we can. So we'll be documenting it. Look for further chapters coming up here in the future. For now, we're gonna let you go. Thanks for joining us and we'll catch you next time.